Around 50,000 years ago in present-day Iraq, Neanderthal Shanidar I, also known as Nandi, roamed the earth. This video explores his life, death, childhood, diet, society, and life-threatening injuries using the latest scientific evidence to uncover the intriguing details of his existence. But before that, if you have any preferable topics that you want us to cover next, let us know in the comments below. The person whose topic piques our interest will get a shout out in that video. Without further delay, let's dig in. Discoveries. In Mula Guersi, remains of at least two adults, two teenagers, and two child Neanderthals, dating back around 100,000 years, were discovered in a cave marked by signs of cannibalism, bones shattered, butchered, and disarticulated. The gruesome scene suggests a possible single catastrophic event. Contrasting this dark episode approximately 80,000 years ago on the shores of Normandy, a Neanderthal family thrived amidst dunes, leaving behind bones, tools, and heartwarming handprints and footprints in the sand. Of the 257 recovered prints, the majority belonged to children and adolescents, offering a glimpse into their familial life. In Covenegra, Spain, 244 bird remains from the Pleistocene era, mainly doves and chops, were found, indicating Neanderthal's skill in hunting small prey. Notably, the bones exhibited tiny scratch marks, potentially made by little Neanderthal fingers, suggesting that even young members of the community were involved, perhaps learning the art of butchery as part of their family's meal preparation. These varied archaeological finds shed light on the multifaceted aspects of Neanderthal life, encompassing both grim realities and heartening glimpses into their familial bonds and daily activities. Living Life Nandi, a Neanderthal from around 50,000 years ago, endured a life marked by extraordinary pain and injuries, making him a remarkable archaeological case. At some point, he suffered a severe, debilitating injury to the right side of his body, leading to questions about whether he might be the earliest recorded case of a successful amputation. The peculiar angle of the surviving bone suggests that Nandi survived for an extended period after this injury, posing intriguing questions about his ability to prevent fatal blood loss and the supportive community around him. The order of these injuries remains uncertain, but what is clear is that Nandi could not have survived alone, especially considering the loss of his arm. Others within his community must have played crucial roles, providing care, bringing him food, and offering the time needed for recovery. Notably, evidence from another Neanderthal at El Cidron in Spain, with poplar bark found in dental plaque, suggests a potential use of natural medicines, such as salicylic acid and aspirin, hinting at Neanderthal's resourcefulness in utilizing plants for medicinal purposes. In a paradoxical twist, the injuries that underscore the potential violence among Neanderthals also become the strongest evidence of their humanity and compassion. Despite the challenges and injuries, Nandi's story reveals a Neanderthal community capable of kindness and mutual care, shedding light on the complex dynamics of their social structure and the ways in which they supported one another through adversity. Environmental Condition When we picture Neanderthals, we often imagine them at the height of the Ice Age hunting woolly rhinos and mammoths, and for sure some did live like that. 125,000 years ago, Neanderthals in Germany were hunting straight tusked elephants, each weighing up to 11 tons or even more. Huge beasts, a huge amount of food, and an incredible display of Neanderthal hunting and teamwork. For our Nandi, though, he was probably not used to such Ice Age conditions. Although we're still trying to reconstruct the environment around Shanidar Cave, at the time Nandi lived, it seems that the climate was probably not wildly different to how it is today. It's interesting to think that the ebb and flow of Nandi's life might have been similar. Winter at Shanidar, spring and summer higher in the mountains. It's certainly possible. Food Habits Neanderthals, known for their robust physique, led highly active lives, possibly needing up to 15% more calories than modern humans. In harsh cold climates, their calorie requirements might have reached 7,000 daily, equivalent to consuming about three reindeer per week for a family of 10 Neanderthals, an ambitious demand. Their substantial calorie needs dismissed any dietary fussiness, likely inclining them to consume the richest parts of prey, such as brains, tongues, and organs. However, dental plaque analysis from Shanidar III and Shanidar Cave challenged assumptions. 
Instead of relying solely on high-calorie prey, Shanidar 3's diet featured fruits like date palms and wild seeds like witchgrass, showcasing a diverse nutritional intake that required considerable time investment in gathering tiny seeds. The increased calorie demand not only posed logistical challenges but also had a profound impact on Neanderthal society, influencing behaviors, interactions, and survival strategies in dynamic environments. The evolving understanding of Neanderthal diets underscores their adaptability and resourcefulness in utilizing a diverse array of food sources to meet their nutritional needs. Weapons. As our understanding of Neanderthals deepens, their remarkable adaptability becomes increasingly evident. They exhibited a diverse diet that included turtles, mussels, and even hibernating bears, showcasing their resourcefulness in acquiring sustenance. While stone tools offer tangible evidence of their existence, sporadic glimpses into their ingenuity arise under specific conditions. Neanderthals in Italy demonstrated a sophisticated use of materials, employing a mixture of beeswax and conifer resin to affix spear points to shafts. This ingenious application involved heating the concoction over a fire, reflecting a form of prehistoric chemistry. Remarkably, they weren't merely functional, they seemingly enjoyed honey while crafting their tools. The challenge in understanding Neanderthals lies in the decomposition of wood, leaving a significant gap in the archaeological record. Occasionally, discoveries like the wooden tool imprint at Abric Romani Rock Shelter in northern Spain provide tantalizing glimpses into their wooden artifacts. The trowel-shaped impression raises intriguing questions about its purpose, potentially a Neanderthal kitchen tool or a small shovel, offering fragments that contribute to unraveling the mysteries of their daily lives. Living State the archaeological revelations from Pugetti Vecchi in Italy, unearthing 58 digging sticks, shed light on the tools Neanderthals, including Nandi, might have employed for gathering plant foods. The Schoningen spears, thought to be crafted by early Neanderthals around 380,000 years ago, discovered alongside butchered horse remains, suggest their potential use in hunting. Another discovery, a 300,000-year-old wooden object believed to be a throwing stick, indicates Neanderthals' ability to hunt small prey, like birds. Despite residing in rock shelters, Neanderthals extended their activities beyond these confines, presenting challenges in understanding their broader environmental interactions. La Folie in France revealed evidence of a Neanderthal camp with a ring of post holes and traces of Paleolithic life, showcasing diverse activities like flint napping, butchering, and cooking. Similar patterns emerged at Kevera in Israel, where daily life remnants were organized into middens, and at El Salt in Spain, Neanderthals displayed a conscientious approach by burying their waste. Even at Abric Romani, evidence suggests Neanderthals might have created lean-tos within the cave for additional shelter. These findings collectively portray Neanderthals as purposeful, organized beings, challenging stereotypes and highlighting their adaptability to diverse environments. Predecessor Genetic evidence illuminates our ancestral interaction with Neanderthals, culminating in shared heritage among non-African populations. This mingling is believed to have transpired in Western Asia shortly after our departure from Africa, with Neanderthal genes present in all non-African individuals, albeit to a lesser extent in modern Africans. Shanidar I, or Nandi, occupies a pivotal role in this genetic amalgamation, potentially representing a common ancestor. Initially contentious, the notion of Neanderthals engaging in mortuary practices, including deliberate burials, gained acceptance through seven decades of research. Shanidar Cave stands as a testament to this, challenging the perception of Neanderthals solely as evolutionary cousins. Nandi, discovered in a fetal position during the 1950s excavation by Selecki, was accompanied by three other Neanderthal remains in close proximity suggesting purposeful placement rather than coincidence. While accidental deaths occur, the clustering implies intentional burial, supported by the meticulous care Neanderthals extended to Nandi during his life. Nandi's enduring preservation for millennia offers a poignant glimpse into the arduous yet affectionate lives of Neanderthal ancestors. The intersection of burial practices and genetic interweaving accentuates the intricate ties between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals emphasizing a shared journey and a lasting impact on our collective heritage. That's all for today. Let's not drag this video any longer. 
Make sure to like, subscribe and press the bell icon not to miss any future updates. See you next time.